Welcome to Tim's Antique Trains. Hello. Today on Tim's Antique Trains, I'm going to try to get this innocent looking HO switcher to run. Right now, it does not run under its own power, even though the motor works. This 1960s locomotive is made by Lindbergh. Now, typically, I would associate the name Lindbergh with Charles, who flew the Atlantic, but the inventor of this engine is Paul Lindbergh, who might be better known for the line of model automobiles. Listen to this advertisement, and then I will explain some things about it. EMD SW600 Switcher, a modeler's dream. Completely modeled in DuPont Delrin for greater strength, heat resistance, and intricate authentic detailing. Painted with authentic road colors with names and heralds. Scaled from manufacturer's blueprints and NMRA specifications are followed throughout. Headlights operate plus scale figures of engineer and fireman are included. The price is $8.95. So what did your $8.95 get you when you bought this engine? Well, I would not call it a modeler's dream. Now, it looks nice. It seems to have accurate paint, and although it is more accurately an SW1, not an SW600, it is within a couple scale feet of the full-size engine for those rivet counters. So they made a nice looking engine. However, this might be just one of the worst drive mechanisms ever made. It's kind of a mechanical nightmare. Just take a look at what's inside. <clears throat> Starting at the bottom, the motor has a flywheel on one end, and the other end drives a small gear, which then turns a giant gear above that. The giant gear shaft then runs over top of the motor and spins a pulley, which originally would have had a coil belt. This belt then twisted 90 degrees and ran through a hole in the frame, which slid inside this brass funnel piece, and then around both axles of the front truck. This belt is the only thing that holds the front truck in place also. What I need to do in order to make this operate is to remove the top shaft, which in the manual calls a jack shaft, and then remove the truck. I have to desolder one of the wires to the pickup so that my new belt can slip over the truck. Now, what I am doing, I had to repeat four or five times in order to find a belt that fit tight enough to drive the axles and not bind up. I eventually found the correct size belt. However, each time I installed it, I actually put it over top of this brass funnel piece. It is supposed to go inside, which I eventually figured out and corrected that off camera. Now I will put everything back together and do a track test. Now I got the belt installed correctly, and the shaft actually spins both axles. I'm sort of impressed. However, there is still one more problem. The back of the shaft is tapered to a point and rides in a brass bearing on the cab side of the large gear. The tower that supports this bearing is bent a little so the shaft will pop up and not mesh with the motor gear, causing it to skip or stop altogether. I was able to sort of repair this by heating the Delrin frame and bending the tower forward just enough to get the shaft to stay in the bearing. I may have to glue the bearing in place, as it still could pop out of place, but let's see if this thing actually goes. I oiled the motor, but the bearings are pretty well shot. It squeals if I rev it too high.
One thing about this engine is that with the huge reduction gear, it is not a racetrack engine. In fact, it does have a pretty good crawl speed. That might be the most impressive slow speed I have seen on an engine this old. It just chugs along without stalling. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for watching Tim's Antique Trains. Remember, the important things according to YouTube are like and subscribe and, well, all that stuff.